Good morning. Welcome this morning. If you'd stand with us. Let's lift our voices this morning. By the cross you came and broke them down, you broke them down. There were chains around us, by your grace we are no longer bound, no longer bound. You call me out of the grave, you call me into the light, you call my name and in my heart came alive. Your love is great. Welcome, welcome. If you're a first-time guest this morning, we want to say thank you for taking, the, taking time out from your day to come and worship with us at, here at Valla Vista Assembly of God. In fact, let's do this. Let's welcome our first-time guest, shall we? As you can see, we're doing things just a little bit differently this morning. Uh, we're not going to have a regular um, sermon service we're going to worship the Lord this morning, and we are going to pray. Amen. So all of the uh, announcements that you, for this week, are in your bulletin. I'm just going to refer you to that. A couple of uh, points. Of, uh, the Bible says to, to rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. And we rejoice this morning with Dave and Charmaine McManus and the birth of their grandson, Sean Christian, and uh, Shauna's... Their first son, praise God. Um, also, we mourn today because our, our dear sister, friend, and fellow worker in Christ, 
pastor, Reverend Evelyn Jones, has gone on to be with the Lord. And we will be having her memorial service this Tuesday at 4 p.m. in the chapel. So what we're going to do here this morning is we're going to follow the Acts, um, I can't think of the word, illustration for prayer. We're going to give adoration to the Lord. We're going to sing a few worship songs. We're going to confess the Lord Jesus and our sins. And we're going to worship some more. We're going to give thanksgiving and we're going to worship some more. And finally, we'll make our supplications to the Lord, and we will worship some more. Can I get an amen this morning? So we begin with adoration this morning, a couple of scriptures. Um, while we're passing by here, the altars are open. If you feel moved by the Lord to come and bend a knee to the Lord regarding any, anything that's on your mind, um, please do that this morning. We want the Holy Spirit to move. We want him to move in us and through us this morning. We'll do all things decently and in order, but these altars are open, and you're welcome to come and pray and kneel before the Lord, um, however the Lord, the God, the Holy Spirit, moves upon you this morning. So Psalm 47, 1 and 2 says, Oh, clap your hands, all you people. Shout to God. Let's do that right now. Yeah. Hallelujah. With the voice of triumph for the Lord Most High, he is awesome. He is a great king and over all the earth. Again, in Psalms 9, verses 1 and 2, we read, I will praise you, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will tell of your marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing to your name, O Most High. Pray with me, would you? Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning and we lift our hands in praise and worship of you, adoration of you. You are God most high, creator of the heavens and the earth and everything in them. You are the savior of our souls, the redeemer of our souls, Lord. And we thank you today. We come to you, Lord, and we just give thanks to you and we honor your name this morning for who you are. You are our Father in heaven, Abba Father, compassionate, loving, merciful, just judge, but you are all those things, Lord, and for those, those things we thank you, and Lord, we just pray that you would come and move in this place, that your name would be honored, that your name would be lifted up in this place, not only this morning, but for every day in our lives, every day in our lives, Lord, that you would be honored and that you would be glorified. And we pray all this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus, and everybody in the house who agreed said, Amen. Amen.
worship you. We stand amazed at your great name, Lord God. We stand in awe of you. Lord, we worship you. We lift our voices to you in praise and in adoration, Lord. You are my life. You are my love. You are my reason. You are my hope. You are my joy. You are my passion, my all in all, Jesus, my all in all, my all in all, Jesus, my all. desert, you're the river, an ever-flowing stream of life. In the battle, you're the victor. We raise your banner high. In the darkness, you're the fire. Holy flame for all to see. And in my heart, you reign forever. My all, my everything. You are my life, you are my love, you are my reason. You are my Would you please be seated? We're going to move into our time of uh, communion here. Pastors, would you position yourselves? Ushers, please come forward.
You know, there's a, in 1993, there was a bridge that crossed a bayou in Mobile, Alabama. Um, it was early in the morning. It was foggy and nobody could see well, and there was a tugboat pushing a barge. Well, the barge accidentally pushed the uh, barge into a bridge. Nobody noticed the damage on the bridge. They did call the, the uh, Coast Guard and uh, um, made an effort to get some people out there, but they had not realized how damaged the bridge was. Well, the Amtrak Starlight was going from L.A. to Miami and crossed the bridge about that time. Uh, the bridge gave way, and the first four locomotives, along with about four passenger cars, careened into the water full of crocodiles. Um, they were able to save about 163 out of 210 people. And one of those cars was um, a couple by the name of Gary and Mary Chaunessy. They were in there with their 11-year-old daughter waiting to get saved. Well, the car, the passenger car happened to roll and it started to fill with water. And they grabbed their daughter and they pushed her through the window into the hands of a rescuer. Now, their daughter was imperfect by this world's standards. You see, she had cerebral palsy and she needed help with just about everything in life. She was very imperfect by the world's standards. But we see how precious this little girl was to her parents because they perished saving her. This is a picture of what our Lord Jesus has done for us. In all of our imperfections, in all of our missteps, in our sin, a perfect God sent his perfect son into an imperfect world to save that which was lost. So when we take communion, this is what we remember. We remember our imperfections, we remember our faults, and we remember how precious we are to Almighty God and His Son Jesus our Lord. Would you please pass out the elements? If we could just maybe, Ruthie, just have a little uh, background music until we... Um, um, ask that you just hold the elements until everybody's served.
nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is that blood that makes me white as snow. No other fact. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Ruthie. As the ushers finish their chores back there and make their way to the front, just take a moment, would you? Picture yourself in that rail car. And it's filling up with with sin, filling up with all your mistakes, and the wrath of God is about to pour in on you. Because as we prayed this morning, God is a just God, and he must punish sin. But in his mercy and his grace and his love toward us, he's provided a way out. The windows has been opened, and Jesus Christ himself is willing, if you will let him, to push you out the window to safety, to life. Amen. We'll wait for our pastors to be served. According to Paul's directive, wait for everybody to be served before we take communion. you're here this morning and you haven't made Jesus your Lord and Savior, we're praying for you. It's just a matter of naming Jesus, calling upon his name. There's no special prescription. Repent. Call on the name of the Lord Jesus and you'll be saved. Stop trying to find your own way into heaven and look to Jesus. He's paid the way. In the meantime, Paul wrote that on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he gathered his disciples together and he broke off a piece of bread and he lifted it and he said, this is my body which will be broken for you. Receive it and when you do, do it in remembrance of me, what I've done for you. Let's take the bread. And in like manner, the Bible tells us that he lifted the cup and he said, this represent a new covenant has made my blood. Take it. And when you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Let's take the cup. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy toward us. That um, when you, when, when John wrote that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, I hope that that resonates in our heart daily what you've done for us. Not it just, uh, sometimes we can get so, um, take things for granted. Oh yeah, I know that scripture. But we pause on that this morning and we reflect on what it actually means. Where we were at and what 
would have happened to us without you and without your son. And so, Lord, we thank you for all that today. We thank you for this time together. And we, give, and we remember you, Jesus. We remember you this morning for all that you've done for us and continue to do. And it's in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Come on up and give you a thanks of thanksgiving. Yeah. Thanks, Dean. Praise the Lord. I want to read two scriptures to you this morning. It's about Thanksgiving. Amen. We have come a long way. God has established this country in his name. So we want to read to you Colossians 1, 9 through 14. For this reason, we also since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding that you may walk worthy before the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work, increasing in knowledge of God, strengthened with almighty accounting according to his glorious power for all presence and long suffering with joy. Amen. Second Corinthians 4 15 All things are for your sake that grace having spread through the many may cause thanks thanking thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God let us pray heavenly father our father lord we come to you right now the most humblest way we know how lord just giving you glory giving you praise lord we just want to thank you for all that you've done Lord, you saved us from ourselves, and yet we don't look within and see ourselves and see our word. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for making a way out of no way, opening doors that have been shut in our face, putting food on the table. Lord, we just thank and praise you. So many times we spend time asking for things, receiving things, and after which we forget. But Lord, we just pray, Lord, that you would just nudge us every now and then and remind us, Lord, what you've done. When we see ourselves and how we could have been, how we could have turned out. We could have woke up in hell. But Lord, you saw fit for us to come together once again. Lord, we present this church and the country before you right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, you said there's an anointing on this church. But anointing costs something. Anointing will cost you your life. Anointing will cost you everything. Because when you have that anointing, then you're going to be rejected. But I stopped by to tell you that God is embracing you right now. The Lord Jesus died on Calvary's cross for this day. 
for the fire and the joy be lifted up. That we would have praise on our lips when we come through the door. Thanksgiving for all that you've done. All that you're going to do. All that's happening in our lives, Lord. We thank you for saving our children. We thank you for saving our family. We thank you for saving our marriage. We thank you for saving the many souls around us. And Lord, we thank you for allowing us to be instruments. And Lord, we give you glory. We give you praise. We thank you right now. We thank you in the power of your son's resurrection. These and many other blessings we ask in the mighty name of Jesus. We present this prayer of thanksgiving of all that you've done for us. Amen, amen, amen. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before. And oh, my soul, I worship your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Sing it out, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, worship your You're rich in love, you're rich in love, and you're slow to anger. Your name is great, and your heart is kind. For all your goodness, I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart. To find bless the Lord, bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his whole. On that day, and on that day, when my strength is failing, the end draws near, and my time has come. Still, my soul will sing your praise unending. Ten thousand years and then forever.
worship your holy name. Amen. Lord, we love you. We thank you, God. We worship you together, Lord. You alone deserve to be glorified. You alone deserve to be worshiped, Lord. is my Savior's blood. The beauty of heaven wrapped in my shame. The image of love upon the tree. You have me, my heart was worth the pain. Joy could you see beyond the grave? If love found my soul worth dying for, I wonder. I see free when I see that grave. I'll see Jesus, and from death to life, I will sing your praise and the wonder of your grace. When I see that cross, I see free when I see that grave. I'll see Jesus, and from death to life, I will sing your praise and the wonder of your grace.
Chains are gone, my debt is paid, and death to life and grace to I give him praise. As the ushers move, come forward for our offering, and Pastor uh, Aaron's going to lead us in a couple of scriptures of uh, confession and prayer there, but we're going to take the offering this morning, and uh, while, as we're, you're preparing these off, your offerings unto the Lord this morning, I want to share a short story from uh, the book of Luke with you, chapter 19, when Jesus entered and passed through Jericho, now behold, there was a certain man named Zacchaeus who was a chief tax collector and was rich. He sought to see who Jesus was, but could not because of the crowd, for he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was going to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and he saw him and he said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must stay at your house. So he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. But when they saw it, they complained, saying that he is gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood and said to, to, to the Lord, Lord, look, I give half my goods to the poor, and if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore full fold. And Jesus said to him today, and Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house. Because he is also a son of Abraham, for the Son of Man has come to seek and save that which is lost. What do we see here this morning in the context of what we're doing? We see that, that uh, it's a two-sided coin there. God extends his gift of grace, and then there's our response. We, how do we respond to that gift that we've been given? Well, we, we share the good news with people. We love people, and we give. We are, we're emulating God in that. God so loved the world that he what? Gave. Gave. Lord, bless your offering this morning, and, and, and um, ushers, thank you for waiting on us. Heavenly Father, we, take that you, we pray that you would receive this offering as an act of worship, uh, that, w- that it would be received and given in joy, Lord. And we just thank you for all that you do in our lives and all that you will continue to do. And it's in your name, Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Come on and lead us in uh, some scriptures and some prayer, Pastor. I'm going to talk about confession. But if we know our scriptures, we know there's two kinds of confession that are very important. The first will be found in Romans 10:13 where it says, because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And Philippians 2, 9 through 11 says, therefore God has highly exalted and bestowed on him the name that is above every name so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus is Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. We confess Christ as our Lord and Savior. We confess him as the King. We we stand with the first century Christians who stood against Rome in saying that Jesus Christ is the only sovereign Lord. Jesus Christ sits above the emperor, above any rule of man, as King of kings and Lord of lords. That's our confession. And we believe that God raised him from the dead and that he sits right now at the right hand of God while all things are put under his feet. There's another uh, confession that we um, hold as Christians that's very important. And this is in 1 John 1, 9. John's writing to Christians here, and he writes, If we confess our sins... He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Verse 10 says, if we, ha- if we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Today, every single one of us has a confession of sin to make. Every single one of us 
needs to look at our life and know that it falls short of the glory of God and it is only renewed in Christ. Christ had to enter that, that train car, that powerful image that we had earlier from Pastor Mark. Christ had to enter that, die for us, push us out that window to the arms of salvation. It was Christ's work alone. And that's, that confession comes with understanding that we are in that train car. We are bombarded by sins. We are servants and slaves to sin until Christ comes and our master comes and he becomes our Lord until he is the one that that is the the thing that binds all of our life up in victory when Jesus said you can't serve two masters he meant it you either serve sin or you serve him dear heavenly father I just ask that you solidify the faith and trust and confession of Christ in our hearts today, that he is Lord and that he is master. But we know your word says that some will say, Lord, Lord, even though they don't serve him. They're workers of iniquity. Let us not be those, Lord. Let our confession be twofold. Let it be of Christ, our Lord, and of our sin and our unworthy service. Let us be servants who come before and plead before the throne of grace. Let us understand that Christ is the all in all. He's the complete one. He's the one that brings us from glory to glory. He's the one that is the one that poured out his life for our lives, that we would stand before the throne, that we would rejoice in him forever. We would understand that it is for the glory of God the Father that we confess the Son and that our Trinitarian God is at work in the world right now in miracles and in salvation in touching hearts and changing lives and sealing believers for eternity with the Holy Spirit. That we would be alive in our confession, Lord. That our, that our emptying of ourselves would mean a filling of you in us. Let that confession be, Lord, we are nothing. You are everything. You are the one who empowers. You are the one who strengthens. You are the one who invigorates this church. And it is because of your spirit and your work on the cross that the gates of hell will not prevail against it. I stand with my brothers and sisters today. And everyone who agrees with this confession says, amen. Stand or fall on you. Jesus.
Jesus, you're my hope and stay. When I cannot stand or fall on you, Jesus, you're my hope and down on my knees again, surrendering all, surrendering all. Find me here, Lord, as you draw me near, desperate for you. Just before you, I surrender. She went.
I surrender I want to know you more I want to know you more I surrender I surrender I want to know you more Lord, I want to know you more Hallelujah 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 We come to our supplication section of our time this morning Supplication is when we ask for those things for ourselves, when we stand in the gap for those that we love. And so, um, a couple of scriptures from Philippians and Ephesians. Uh, Philippians 4 and 6 says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And then again in Ephesians we read, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. So would you agree with me in prayer? Lord, we come to you today, Lord, and we, uh, we ask for the miraculous, not the mundane, Lord. Lord, we ask that you would come and that you would so move among in this congregation and in our personal lives in such a way that there's no question that it was God of heaven who came in and did something miraculous. We're believing for Kathy's health, Lord. We, we prayed and we pray again for healing in her body and all of those who, who, who are, are, are ravaged with, with disease and, and sickness, Lord. We know that you are able, that you made a way to heal all of that. And we just pray that uh, we would see the goodness of God, the power of God in the land of the living. Yes. In the land of the living, Lord, for our friends, those, those friends that are, that are, are parents who are, who are ill, friends who are ill, children who are addicted. Yes. Lord, set them free from the bondage. Um, 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 let, the, let the light of the glory of Jesus Christ shine upon them and shine upon their hearts and let them have an awakening, oh God. Let them have an awakening. We, and in that health, in that physical health, Lord, we pray for spiritual health for this congregation. Let it start right here. Let's, let, let us be people who are spiritually healthy, Lord, who, who are going, who are, who are self-feeders, who are going to the word of God, who are taking time in prayer daily, Lord, to, to be re renewed in the things of the Holy Spirit, being renewed in the word of God, being renewed in our relationship with you, O oh God that you would take us from faith to faith and glory to glory, God. We pray for unity among the body of Christ, Lord. Let this congregation be marked by unity in the Holy Spirit. Let this congregation be marked by the power of the Holy Spirit. We're sealed in the Spirit. Let that mark be upon us outwardly so when, when people come in, they would say the, the, the Spirit of God rests upon this place. But you know why the Spirit of God rests upon this place? Because the Spirit of God is in you. Because the Spirit of God is in you, and I just pray that that would be pouring out um, in our relationships, Lord, that we would truly love one another. Jesus Christ said, they will know you are mine by what? Your love for one another. So unity, love, and, and strength in this community, in this, in this congregation, oh God. We pray that for Idlewild Assembly of God, Lord. The new leadership up there, TK and Lori, anoint them, use them. Let there be unity. Let there be, let there be unity in the spirit, God. And we pray in the name of Jesus that these, these, the ministry here would grow. That what's going on inside of us would be an outpouring into the community, into our relationships and into the community. That this place, this, 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 this campus would be a lighthouse for this community, Lord. That people would come here and they would know that people love God here. And because they love God, they know they're going to be loved too, regardless of their circumstances, regardless of what, what, what's going on in their lives. Because we know somebody who can take care of that. That we know the Lord Jesus changes people's want to 
do we not? And so we are products of that. We are beneficiaries of that. We, we've been blessed by the grace of God. So Lord, help us in that. Help us to be about your business. Lord, we need a change of culture in this place. Lord, we stand on the wonderful foundation that's been built for us here. Uh, wonderful saints of the past who gave of their time and their talent and their treasure and in unity built this building, built the ministries that we enjoy today, Lord. But it, today is a day where it is time to move forward. It's a new day and we need to look at the day with different eyes. And so, Lord, help us in that. Help us each one in that to look at things through a fresh set of eyes. We thank you for the past and we praise you for those, for those saints that have gone before us. But now we're part of the future here. And so, Lord, I pray that you'd instill that in each and every one of our hearts there. That we are the future of Valla Vista Assembly of God. That you want to use each and every one of us here today. Not just some, but everybody in this room. Take a part and, and move forward in the Lord. We thank you for that, God. We we thank you for that, Lord, and we just praise your name this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen and amen and amen. Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of sin? Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of self? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to.
Praise God. Yes. We always want to keep the focus on our Lord Jesus, but I, I really do feel led this morning to thank him for the tremendous worship team we have and our ministry team, our ushers and our pastors, because I did throw them a couple of curveballs this morning and they just didn't miss a step. And so can we just thank the Lord for them this morning? I thought this was important to us. I felt that the Lord wanted us to do this today before we took a step forward together in this new season that we would honor him, worship him, pray to him, and, and, and seek him corporately as well as individually. And I, and I trust that the Lord, the Holy Spirit, has moved upon you personally today in regard to your relationship with him and, and maybe your relationship to this congregation and um, I'm believing the Lord for that. Um, as you leave this morning, we had a young family come in and, and ask for a, a little help. It was a legitimate uh, need. And we're going to have the, the usher stationed outside if you have s some spare money that you can possibly bless this family with. I didn't want to, uh, um, you to miss out on the blessing. So there, there, there'll be that opportunity on the way out. Um, no pressure and no expectation any way whatsoever. But uh, as we leave here this morning, um, we will begin to cast vision next week. I'm coming to you with a message called A New Thing. And um, we're, um, I feel th the Lord is doing a new thing, and he wants to in involve each and every one of us in that. Each and every one of us. I truly believe that with all my heart. And I hope that the Lord is speaking to you about those things. Because it's gonna, we're changing the culture here at Idaho, or Valley Vista Assembly. Um, can, can you tell where I came from? <laughs> um, I love Idaho Wild and, um, and I love you. And, um, but uh, the, Lord, the Lord is able to do miraculous things with people who are willing to move forward with him. And sometimes it gets a little uncomfortable, friends. Sometimes it takes a, a little self-sacrifice. It's not something we talk a lot about, but it's very much a biblical um, um, subject. So as we close out here this morning, um, Paul wrote uh, to the church in Rome, Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace, believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. When I read that word hope, I think of confident expectation. We have a confident expectation that Almighty God's doing something here today and in our future. Heavenly Father, we love you and we thank you and we praise you. And Lord, I just thank you that you're here in us and among us today, Lord. And as we go about our day, that you uh, the Holy Spirit, you'd be speaking to us about the future, about what you have for us, not just as a congregation, but as individuals, Lord, and how we are all going to work together in unity to bring you glory in the community of heaven, God. So, Lord, help us and guide us. We submit it all to you today, Lord, and I thank you for each one of my friends here today. I just pray that you would turn your face to them, be gracious to them, and give them peace, that your, your peace and your provision and your protection would rest upon every home and soul represented in this room, oh God. And Lord, we thank you, we thank you, and we love you. And it's in your name, Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, amen. amen. God bless you all. See you next week.
Yeah. 